Thanks for waking up with us. Breaking well, news. We've got some very, very uh, disturbing news for you today. We're going to start straight, uh, straight away with the case of child abuse Breaking victim news. and whistleblower Melanie Shaw. This was the very brave lady who went to Nottinghamshire Police and Nottingham uh, City news. and County Council to blow the whistle on not only her own abuse of Beechwood Children's Home in Nottingham. Uh, but as it subsequently emerged, it emerged hundreds of other children in, involved. But let's remember this is Theresa May that's helped put Melanie Shaw, child abuse victim and survivor Thanks and whistleblower. This woman has been repeatedly locked up in prison with one objective, and that is to shut her up because she is one of several people uh, based in the Nottingham area who know that child abuse was involving members of Westminster. Now, we received this um, email that says, Dear Brian, I received a letter yesterday from Melanie. So, remembering that Theresa May has said, Don't worry, we're entering a period of change, we're into the new fair society, uh, highly appropriate to bring up Melanie Shaw. Uh, information about what's been going on around her. It's very difficult to get information because of course the prison is stopping uh, We have been receiving very, very disturbing news about the brave child abuse survivor and whistleblower Melanie Shaw. Uh, this is the lady who first blew the whistle on um, child abuse in Beechwood Children's Home, Nottingham, and that very quickly resulted in at least 100 victims at that children's home alone uh, being known. Uh, however, since that time, Melanie has been uh, imprisoned in Peterborough Prison, uh, where she was bullied, put in solitary confinement, de denied medical um, proper medical treatment, and uh, having been found guilty in a court in Nottingham on charges of negligent arson um, and criminal damage. Uh, she's now under a probation order. Uh, but yesterday she was reporting to us in a very distressed state uh, that she had been picked up by Nottingham Police and taken to Queen's Hospital to a special mental assessment unit. Now, we will cover here the tweets that we put out yesterday. Let's have a look at those. Uh, but uh, as events, I'm um, sorry, this was on Saturday initially uh, and it's continued over the weekend. So the main point is that uh, Melanie Shaw uh, contacted us to report that uh, basically she was being followed and harassed by Nottingham Police and this had escalated after she'd made a complaint of rape to the police. Um, so my tweet here said that uh, we'd received a very distressed telephone call from Melanie Shaw uh, saying that she was uh, waiting for a psychiatric assessment in the Queen's unit, Nottingham. Uh, she was very frightened that they were working to section her and of course the aim of this we believe would be to silence her as a very vital um, child abuse whistleblower. So we followed up that initial report uh, by saying that uh, we, we then understood that uh, around 7 p.m., this is Saturday night, Melanie was dis discharged. Um, we were waiting confirmation from her and we are making the point here that it's interesting. The state in the United Kingdom does not help child abuse victims. It victimizes them further. Uh, we established that Melanie was out um, she had been treated very badly. We understand she was strip searched again. And uh, in, our, in her reports to the UK column, Melanie consistently said that she was being subject, subjected to harassment by Nottingham police, followed in cars, late night phone calls, and uh, she was extremely concerned for her safety. The comment we made was this sick government which abuses victims to protect abusers. It's up to all of us, all of the members of the public, to stop the criminal activity of David Cameron's conservative government. And uh, we stand by those comments and uh, we're also standing by the reports that we've had from Melanie that she has suffered two weeks of constant harassment uh, by not only the police in the Nottingham area, but also the local authorities. If we sum it up, it's clear that 
the um, victims of um, child abuse in UK simply do not have a voice as far as the authorities are going. Mm. And of course, 300 people at a meeting in Westminster last week uh, in order to complain about um, uh, child abuse throughout UK and the fact that Theresa May has consistently failed to uh, get a full investigation underway. Uh, none of the mainstream uh, press or media reported those 300 people. Aside from the sheer horror of the fact that a British government would protect child abusers, uh, let's look at what Melanie was threatened with because the unit in Nottingham, like many others throughout the country, works on section 136. Here is the section 136 fact sheet. Uh, the police taking you to a place of safety from a public place. So it's sold as if, as if this is something uh, nice but here are all of the rules. A place of safety can be a hospital or a police station. The police can move you. Have a look at the detail on this uh, piece of paper, which is setting out how any of us could be picked up at any location, public location or private location by the police and simply put into a gulag of mental assessment. On a whim. On a whim. Yeah. Uh, the police have the power to remove you from a public place if they think you have a mental illness. They think. All they've got to do, Mike, as you've just pointed out, is think that you have a mental illness and you're in immediate need of care and control and they can deliver you into a psychiatric unit. And um, uh, this is a more detail here. You can be on this section for up to 72 hours until an approved mental health professional and or doctor sees you. And of course, ultimately, you can be sectioned. But what we picked up in this document is it refers you directly to a charity, rethink.org. So here we are. This is the charity given the power behind Section 136. And if you visit their website, uh, they're saying in very um, encouraging, slightly cuddly terms, well, trust Rethink. We're here to protect people with uh, mental illness. But in fact, Rethink, of course, are working very closely uh, with the police, it would appear, and in uh, Section 136 documentation. Um, it was very interesting that uh, um, on the radio this morning, um, they were talking about uh, mental health and so on, and they were saying that not enough money was being put into uh, mental health uh, care for children. Um, and uh, one of the people that was, I uh, can't remember the details of this now, but one of the people that was commenting on this was saying what a great job the government was doing and that the government deserved thanks and so on. Uh, and then used the words charity in the same sentence as government. And the implication absolutely was that uh, uh, government and charity is the same thing. And I just thought that was a fascinating little uh, suggestion through the BBC. A nudge. A nudge. I think that's yeah. a nudge. Yeah. We're talking about applied psychology here. Uh, let us come back just briefly for, before you continue, Mike, and say that Melanie Shaw, as a victim of unspeakable abuse, not only in her family life as a very small child, but then in the care of the state in Children's Home Beechwood, has received absolutely no proper uh, psychiatric or um, clinical psychology care from the state mm. in order to deal with her suffering as an abuse victim. And of course, this is the pattern across uh, Britain, no help at all from the victims. But when it comes to delaying and stalling a proper investigation into the crime of paedophilia, particularly by the establishment and politicians, uh, well, of course, unlimited time, money, uh, an effort. Well, That's we've got we some very, very uh, disturbing news for you today. We're going to start straight, uh, straight away with the case of child abuse victim and whistleblower Melanie Shaw. This was the very brave lady who went to Nottinghamshire Police and Nottingham uh, City and County Council to blow the whistle on not only her own abuse at Beechwood Children's Home in Nottingham, uh, but as it subsequently emerged, it emerged hundreds of other children in, involved. Now, we have supported Melanie as we've watched her go through a catalogue of abuse by the authorities since she whistle blew. Uh, we're going to recap some of that. And then I'm going to bring you an update on Melanie Shaw, which I'm sure many of you will find not only shocking, but unbelievable in uh, 
David Cameron's caring conservative Britain uh, in 19, uh, correction in 2015. Um, so just to, if you just, just hold that one, for, will you, for, for a moment, uh, Nick, I'm going to do what I often do, which is an on-screen uh, uh, update. I've just got some information coming in, so stay with me. Um, okay, let's have a look. Um, recap of uh, what has happened to Melanie. Well, of course, she was abused as a toddler by her family. Uh, she was then put into foster care where she was totally failed by Nottinghamshire Social Services. Uh, she was abused in foster care. She was placed in Beechwood Children's Home where she was badly um, sexually and physically abused, as were many other children. And of course, it was Melanie's testimony um, that started to reveal that children uh, had committed suicide in remarkable numbers. And indeed, Melanie uh, claimed that children were murdered at Beechwood Children's Home. Uh, once she whistled blew, she was warned that her child would be taken from her unless she stopped speaking out. She refused to remain quiet and subsequently Nottingham Social Services did in indeed take her child. She's then been imprisoned where she was held in solitary confinement. Uh, she was bullied, she was denied medical care and subsequently she was found guilty of arson in what many regard as a defective court hearing. Uh, Melanie Shaw is technically free, uh, but under the control of Nottinghamshire probation. Uh, so why should we be concerned with Melanie now? Well, let's have a look at what's been going on. Since her trial, Melanie has still not received her proper benefits. She has still not been given a proper support worker. She has been continually harassed and bullied by Nottinghamshire police. This includes uh, cars following her, police officers uh, uh, being unusually kind and saying your shopping's heavy, get in. It's involved late night phone calls. It's, it's involved people who claim they are senior police officers casually saying, I am sitting in your house on your sofa, but we're really looking after you, Melanie. She has also reported serious rape, uh, her rape to Nottingham Police. And uh, according to Melanie's latest testimony, there is no indication that those that rape allegation is being investigated by Nottinghamshire Police. And we can also say that Nottinghamshire Council has no proper ongoing investigation into Beechwood, uh, nor have they set up any support arrangements for the hundreds of other um, victims. So Melanie Shaw still needs your help and support. Please help us to keep Melanie and all the other thousands of abuse victims in the public eye so that we can bring the abusers to justice. to say about Melanie Shaw? Well, I think this is a terrible case. Again, as I mentioned, I'm only confident about talking in great detail about the Holly Gregg case because that's the only case that I really have first-hand information on and I've researched thoroughly. But in the case of Melanie Shaw, Melanie has merely made allegations that have been made by many other people in the Nottingham area. Uh, the school there, Beechwood, which coincidentally has the same name as the school that Holly was, uh, was in in Aberdeen, and it's quite clear already that many people have behaved very badly in the Nottingham area uh, towards children. So Melanie is only saying what other, other, she's not saying this unilaterally and nobody else has made allegations. Lots of people have made the same sort of allegations there. So why is Melanie Shaw being persecuted in the way she is? And I understand from what I have heard that the treatment of her has been absolutely terrible. It's monstrous and it, it really amounts to torture. Uh, and that has been the case in the prisons, as I understand it, based on what I have been told. There's obviously a real attempt to shut this brave woman up because, again, as in all the other cases that we know about, the victims who are brave enough to come forward are ruthlessly persecuted to the state. And that doesn't matter what part of the United Kingdom. We're not just talking about Scotland here. We're talking about England, Wales, probably in Northern Ireland as well. 
Uh, so that is the way it is. It's happening with Melanie Shaw, it's happening with the Doherty's, it's happening with the Hampstead case and many others as well. And we must stop this. We must, as a people, we've got to stand up for our children. The country isn't worth anything unless we're all prepared to speak out and defend our children and children to come, grandchildren, great-grandchildren. They're all going to be in the same situation unless we speak out and are brave enough to speak out. Let's have a few more people coming forward, politicians, celebrities, people from the church, people whose voices are heard, and most importantly of all, the media. The media could do a great deal to actually prevent this, if only they had the courage to say so. Uh, there was actually quite a big story about the, the poor lady who died, uh, the lady the Saywood, um, at the, uh, the rectory uh, 30 years ago, the rape and burglary and so forth, and how brave she was. Uh, now, obviously that was supposed to help victims, but actually we haven't seen much evidence of that. We're still seeing victims persecuted and silenced and uh, dealt with in a, in a terrible way, as if they're the criminals rather than the people who inflict these terrible things. And I would finally just like to go back to uh, something I mentioned in the, uh, the last interview, and that was, and may I quote again, Dr. Jack Boyle, one of uh, Britain's most eminent psychotherapist who's very experienced in dealing with child victims of sexual abuse. And again, I would say, and I stress this, and I ask you to put this to your MPs, your MSPs, or then the Dr. Jack Boyle, in his assessment after examining Holly, made the general statement that research shows that children do not generally make up stories of sexual abuse. Therefore, most of them must be telling the truth. And in that case, then those, all those cases must be examined, examined thoroughly. And if the police are not doing this, or if they've been told not to do it by politicians or people further up the ladder, then something is very, very seriously wrong with our country and it must be put right without delay. Thank you very much. At last, we're here. We're now in a position to hold absolutely everyone to account for the last 12 years. Um, we've been on the development situation over the last week, dealing with dodgy landlords, rogue landlords, um, particularly in the, the police community being Hedy Muir and Denny in Scotland. Uh, we set this place up uh, to capture all the evidence that we could possibly get. Uh, we're dealing with people who are affected by a major authority um, because of my investigative processes and the historic child sexual abuse and try to highlight the same and the persecution and torture of the state that's happened to us for the last 12 years where I've been silent, quiet and very cleverly, monotone, recording absolutely everybody. Now I've got 11 terabyte of, uh, evidence, it's equivalent to 22,000 feature films. Now let me tell you, if I've ever spoken to you or you've ever spoken to me in the last 12 years, I've got a recording of you. Trust me. My dad always told me that he who laughs last, laughs the longest. Chess is an amazing game. I always win. I've sat back for the last 12 years, trying to get effective remedy, redress and accountability at court. I've held people accountable and I've suffered for it and what I'm about to do next. Well I'm coming for the lot of yous. Every single one of yous. The day's date is the 31st of July 2016. This is Police Scotland. Paedophile organisations licensed in child exploitation. Soon I'll be bringing up videos. It was taking place today, the 31st of July 2016. And believe me, he who laughs last Last the longest. Uh, let's just take our minds back to um, November, 16th of November last year, where she said she she had she has. Um, uh, absolute confidence in the child abuse inquiry to which we say of course you do Teresa as the plan is to silence the survivors 
of abuse. And we're, we are pretty confident in, in our statement uh, because we're very sad to tell our audience today that the best information we've had is that Melanie Shaw, the whistleblower on the horrific abuse in the Beechwood Children's Home in Nottingham, uh, was sentenced to two years yesterday. She did not appear in court. There was a video link run. Melanie has previously complained that when she's um, uh, been giving testimony by video link to one of the courts, she has always been cut off. Uh, the excuse has then been given to her because she was shouting and she says, I was not shouting. But what is extremely interesting about this extremely harsh sentence is that uh, there, it, the case was not publicly listed in the court uh, of, and the court um, listings. listings before the case, and the case took place late morning, uh, coming up to lunchtime. Uh, but it was listed after lunch. Um, staff at the court were happy to say that she received a sentence of two years, uh, but when they were asked what the charges were, uh, they said, uh, "I'm afraid we're not allowed to tell you that." So, without any doubt, what appears to have taken place is a secret hearing. Melanie denied appearance to give her own evidence in court. Uh, she's apparently sentenced to two years. Now, she's already spent, I think, nearly 11 months in prison, uh, but there's no mention of uh, the actual time served um, in relation to that sentence. Now, what's going on here in our minds is that the state, the British state, under the leadership of Theresa May is desperate to silence Melanie Shaw. They want her silenced, they want her disappeared in the prison gulag because of course Melanie is one of the key survivors who not only knows about the abuse and death of children in the so-called care system uh, but she is one of a number of uh, survivors in the Nottingham area that have talked about politicians being involved in that chain of abuse. So I just hope that our audience today realise the seriousness of this, that we're now living in Britain under Theresa May, where if the state is worried by threats um, of the truth, um, people are going to be silenced in secret court hearings. Now, of course, why, why is child abuse such a key issue? we would suggest because powers can use it to blackmail individuals and of course one of the implications that's been suggested even in the mainstream press over many years is that uh, overseas powers uh, may use that abuse directly to influence what is happening politically. Um, just to clarify something you said there because I'm quite sure um, Full Fact or some other organisation will complain about your comment that this was secret, a secret court. Um, you said that the, the court hearing was not listed until after the court hearing took place. Yeah. Right, so that, that is effectively a secret court then. Uh, well, we can probably add to that because we, we, we are very confident that uh, no member of the public actually appeared in that, in that court hearing. Certainly none of the people who've been following Melanie's case very closely, indeed individuals that have been uh, talking uh, with a legal team to some extent, uh, none of those people were fully aware of where the case was going to be. And we get another clue because uh, do not think that all the court staff are bad people, absolutely untrue. It's quite clear that many of the court staff, uh, not only in Nottingham but in other areas of the country, are actually as puzzled themselves as, as to why they're not allowed to tell the public information which they would normally be doing quite freely. Uh, I mean, we don't know what she's been convicted of. They refuse to tell us what she's been convicted of. So that's another example of it being a yeah. secret process. Indeed. So this is a political prisoner. Uh, well, we're, we're now living in a dictatorship, Mike. And what is so um, uh, unpleasant is, of course, that the dictatorship we live in under this vicious Tory government and Theresa May is the same organisation that is busy pointing a finger at countries overseas and saying, well, you're not running a democracy, so we need to invade you. This is obscene. Um, just before we move on, I'm just going to put up this again and uh, just read it out for, uh, <clears throat> for listeners. Uh, Melanie Shaw's address is A, her, her prison number is A4126DE, and that's HMP Foston Hall, 
Utoxeter Road, Foston, Derby, DE65, 5DN. Um, and I would encourage everybody uh, that's watching or listening to this program uh, to please write to this lady and offer your support. Yeah, and I'll, I'll just add, somebody's commented in the chat box that she should be released shortly then, and they've made that uh, comment on the basis that normally people uh, will serve roughly 50% 50, 50 of a sentence, so a two-year sentence, that's a year. She's already served uh, 11 months on remand, so she should be out shortly. I would say this is extremely unlikely because all the indications are the state wants Melanie Shaw silenced as long as possible.